Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about vermiculture and uh, associated things with that. So today, what we're going to do is we are going to look in on my lasagna style bin. Now, I know you see shredded paper here on top, but generally this lasagna bin is only layers of cardboard that has not been shredded, food, and more cardboard, and usually kept moist enough to make the worms happy. Kind of uh, simulating uh, for anybody who might just want to do this outside or doesn't have a shredder. You know, something that they can do and participate in vermiculture, even if they don't have all the same equipment as we do. So, it has been 67 days since the worm emergency where this was flooded. Um, and uh, it's been about 30, 30 or 32 days since we've looked in on this bin. And we fed them my... Um, worm chow because we thought the bin was getting a little bit too wet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to peel back the layers of the lasagna and see what we've got. Looks like it has been drying out so yay. Super happy about that. You can see a little cocoon here. I'll put him in on the wet part so they can you know get done. Here's one of my little friends. He's an arthropod. He's an isopod and I don't know if you can see it, but here's another one of my little friends, a mite. Now, a lot of people freak out when they see mites. However, there's a thousand different uh, species of mites, and I'm not exaggerating, for real. Um, and the ones that you're gonna find in your worm bin are not the same species that are gonna hurt your plants. So just keep that in mind when you see these. They may creep you out because they're creepy crawlies, but they're here to do the shredding job for the worms and for the other creatures. So, as weird as they are, they are good for the bin. Okay, so it looks like the lasagna bin has, has definitely made some progress here. All that shredded paper that I put in to absorb the water when we had that, that problem has been, uh, for the most part, okay, all right, pause on the theory here. Okay, so we were talking about those cherry red worms last time and we didn't see one with a clitellum. Now this one has the clitellum, so I am going to have to find a pot to put him in so that I can look at him underneath a microscope to see what kind of worm this is. And if you don't already know, the way that you can find out what kind of worm you have is by looking very closely at how many segments there are before the clitellum and not that you're going to be able to see this, but on the flip side, there are reproductive pores on the other side of the worm that you can also count how many segments there are from the clitellum. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him someplace where I can get back at him again and look at him under the microscope. And then we will know, is this a blue worm or red worm or one of those rubellus that came in on like some leaves or something. Okay, back to the plan. So the plan for today is to make sure that these guys have enough food for while I am gone on vacation and also when I get back from vacation when everything's a mess. <laughs> you know how it is, you go on vacation and you always look forward to it, but then when you come home, you have all the laundry, all the housekeeping. You can't expect your uh, house sitter to, to do everything. So. I am going to continue having videos the entire time that I'm on vacation so you guys won't, you know, even know I'm gone if you didn't already know because I told you. Does that make any sense? You know what I mean. If you're one of my warm people, you know what I'm talking about. So we've got a lot of uh, very finished stuff down there. Let's look on the other side and see what the worms are doing over here. So it looks like they are really doing a good job with all of their shredded cardboard. Okay, so here's another thing, sidebar. Again, that's just me. So everybody wonders about the Amazon black tape, what comes on your, um, on your boxes. Now this is in process tape. This is what it's doing. It's supposed to be compostable. And as we know, a lot of things that they say are compostable are not always vermi compostable. So let's keep an eye on this. Let's put this in the corner and see if this goes away. I think it does because I put it in there all the time and I hardly ever see it in that sort of in between stage where it kind of looks like a rubber band. Okay, so what we've got here is more of the same from the other side. We had put in some of the, you know, chow, which we wouldn't expect to see 30 days later, 
but it does look like they've taken care of just about everything in here as far as the shredded cardboard and stuff. All right, well, clearly what we have here is we're ready for some more, more noodles. And since the warm emergency is over, I'm gonna take these dry bits out. We don't need those anymore. The bin has finally come to equilibrium and we should be good. All right, so usually how this goes, if you're new here, is we take off the dry noodles and we go down to here, which is the first noodle that is in process, the cardboard that is in process. So we wanna make sure we're going all the way across and then I'm going to dump a very odd feeding, but it's that time of the year here. P.S. If you're liking this video, give it a money thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family and you're ready for all of that kind of craziness, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, let me go get the weird food. So I did this last year and it worked out really well. What these are is twirlers or keys, depending upon where you're from from my maple trees, and I do have quite a few. So what this usually does is they go ahead and they eat all of this kind of uh, fluffy part here first, and then the maple keys will sprout and then I flip them over, and then they will have nice fresh greens to eat. But this is a good balance of um, slow food and fast food that the worms will be able to take a part of while I'm gone. So just because this is kind of a strange food, and we're not using my normal bedding with this, I am going to give them some grit. So, I have an abundance of eggshells, so no, that's probably not necessary to have that much grit on there. But like I said, I have an excess, and uh, if the worms don't use it, the plants will. Now let's get them a little bit of worm chow to put on top of here just to make sure in case they can't get to the fluffy part of the key, they'll have something to eat in the next week or so. Now this worm chow is a mixture of cornmeal, oatmeal, wheat flour, and ground up um, bird, bird seed. I found a damaged bag at a farm store that they were um, selling off for like $5. So I went ahead and got myself some of that. I always try not to buy things because the whole point of what I'm doing here is to use up things that I have naturally in my household, whether it be things from the outside or things that are part of my kitchen or maybe something my friend isn't going to eat. You know, Cece, the worm's godmother. All right, now let me get me a little bit of water here to put over the top of this, and then we'll give them some new cardboard. So for me, the kind of water that I use is tap water, but I do let it sit you know, for a couple of days before I give it to my plants or my worms because I do have municipal water and they do add chlorine to the water to um, make sure there's no bacteria in it for us to drink. But because chlorine does evaporate very quickly, if you leave your water out for a couple of days, it's usually enough. Now, if you happen to live in a municipality that uses chloranamines, I know I'm getting technical here, but you can look it up. Um, on your city if what they add to the water to keep it clean. Now that does take a special thing like fish drops. I do have a link below in my Amazon link for what you use when you're starting a fish tank and that is sufficient to keep your worms safe from something that might hurt them. All right, now I don't advocate just pouring water but I am just drizzling a little bit over the top of my hand to kind of control it. Uh, my sprayer died and I have not purchased a new one. So we're going to put these old pieces of cardboard down that have already started being noodles. And then we are going to get them some new noodles for the top. Okay, so, and I try and soak them in water for a little, a little bit so that they're not completely, completely dry. And it also gives it a chance to get the uh, glue that's in between the layers of the cardboard started. Now this particular experiment is not always everybody's bag and some people are like, this is dumb, I'm never doing that. <laughs> and if you're one of those people, I have a playlist over here for a totally normal bin that almost everybody can do and will enjoy. It's called my DIY bin. But if you like this bin, I have a playlist that I'm going to put over here 
of the history of the lasagna bin. And you can go right on over there and look at that right now. But thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.